What's up guys? Today I'm going to show you how to install Alpine Linux in VirtualBox. Alpine is a very interesting distribution. It's very lightweight and very secure, which is what put it on my radar originally, because those are of course two of the big things that I look for in a Linux distribution. Alpine is a little different though than the other distros I've covered so far on this channel. It doesn't really market itself as a desktop distro. In fact, on the about section of their website, it's marketed as a general purpose distribution. But in my research, I've noticed that a lot of people are using Alpine as a Docker container or just using it in VirtualBox like I'm going to show you guys today. And that's primarily because it's built on Muscle instead of glibc and BusyBox instead of the GNU core utils both of which are far more minimalist compared to their GNU counterparts. So if you were to run this distro and compare it to another binary minimalist distro like Arch, then you would find that Alpine uses noticeably less RAM and disk space. And obviously if you scale that up to say 16 virtualized instances of Alpine versus 16 virtualized instances of Arch, the difference in CPU, RAM, and disk space consumed would become very significant. So enough hype, let's get to the installation. You can download the ISO from the download section of the website. Scroll down here to standard. This is the ISO that I'm gonna be using, the x86-64 version. And as you can see, it's a very, very tiny ISO, only 122 megs. I think this is actually one of the smallest Linux ISOs that I've ever used. So I've already got it downloaded on my computer. Let's just go over here to VirtualBox and I'm going to call it Alpine Linux. And you want to use the type as just this generic Linux version uh, 2.6. Make sure it's 64-bit. And I'm going to set the memory usage to 4 gigs of RAM. Uh, but like I said, this is a really minimalist distro, so you could easily get away with 2 megs or even, I mean, excuse me, you could easily get away with um, 2 gigs or 1 gig of RAM. You don't necessarily have to use 4 gigs like I'm doing here. And for the hard disk space, I'm going to, of course, do it VDI, fixed size as always. And I'm going to set it up to be 30 megs. Not too big because I'm just doing a little bit of testing on this distro. So let's create it. And then we're going to change some things around in our settings. So I'm going to add another processor core. Again, not really necessary to have a whole bunch of threads for Alpine. It's a very lightweight distribution. Just set whatever's appropriate for your system. I'm gonna make the hard disk be the primary boot order so I don't have to change that arrangement after we install it. Crank up the video memory. And I think VBox VGA is what I need to set in order to get everything working right. And let's add our ISO file. So we got that. Okay, I think everything's good to go. So let's go ahead and start it up. And of course, it's gonna start off screen. That's fine, I'll just drag the window over. So it uses OpenRC as its init system, which is another great thing that I like. I'm not really a huge fan of System D. It tends to be a little bit bloated for what I need to do. And, uh, oh, I'm having a laugh. I'm trying to log in as myself. Uh, we're gonna log in as root, because that's the only user that we have available right now. So once you log in, you get greeted with this screen. It's of course a terminal, because it's a minimalist distribution. But it's really, really easy to set it up. In fact, it just tells you down here, you can set up the system with the command, set up Alpine. So let's go ahead and do that. And first thing it wants us to set is our keyboard layout. So I'm going to do US, and I'm going to use the US variant of the keyboard. And then it wants my system host name. I'm just gonna call it Alps for now. And it's asking which uh, network card I want to initialize. It only detects one. And by the way, this 
space that you see here that's inside of the square brackets, that just means whatever the default value is. And most of what I'm going to be setting is default values. Uh, so when that pops up, all you really have to do is hit enter. And I'm gonna hit enter again to use DHCP. Um, enter again, because there's no manual network configs. Now it wants a root password. Let's go ahead and set that. Which time zone am I in? I'm in EST. If you're not sure about um, the way to phrase your time zone, you can just hit the question mark and it'll give you a list of all the different time zones. I know I'm Eastern Standard Time though. All right, and uh, what is this? Uh, proxy, we don't need a proxy. And I'm fine with using Crony as the NTP client. So let's use that. Really complicated so far. <laughs> no, not really. I'll, yeah, I'll use one as the default mirror. I'll use OpenSSH as the SSH. And what disk do you want to install in? So now we actually have to you know, use our brain, use about 1% brain capacity. Uh, SDA is the disk we're gonna install on. And we're going to use it as sys. And yes, let's erase the disk and install. And the installation is complete. I've got to say, this is by far the fastest Linux installation that I've ever done, and I didn't even dedicate as many resources as I normally do to this VM. So let's go ahead and reboot. And I shouldn't have to change my disk order, and neither should you if you already set the hard disk to be the first priority ahead of time. We get our nice little open RC prompt. <clears throat> And I'm gonna log in as root with the password that I set. And now we're in Alpine Linux. So to give you an idea of how lightweight this is, um, actually, let's just use top. That's a little simpler. So yeah, you can see it's, it's using a very, very small amount of RAM. I haven't compared this yet to Gen 2, I think, Gen 2 still uses a little bit less, but this is definitely using less RAM than a distribution like Arch. So let's actually get this interesting because right now it's, it's kind of boring, you know, it's just a terminal. So Alpine has this package manager called APK, just stands for the Alpine Package Manager. And if we do an APK update, we can see the number of packages that are available. Now, there's really not a lot. There's only 5,351. Uh, so let's go ahead and start fixing that. First thing I need is a text editor. I think it comes, that um, Alpine comes with Nano, but you guys know that I like Vim. So let's go ahead and get Vim installed. And then I'm going to Vim into Etsy APK repositories. And I'm going to uncomment everything in here so that I have access to all of the packages that Alpine has to offer. Right quit. And then if I APK update again, now I have access to just over 27,000 packages. Quite a bit more reasonable. So it's not going to have as many as Arch or Gentoo, at least for the time being. And that's due to the fact that Alpine is not as popular as a distro. It's not really trying to be a desktop Linux distribution, uh, at least at the time that I'm recording this. And it's also due to the fact that it's built on Muscle and BusyBox. Uh, that really doesn't help because the vast majority of stuff on Linux is built to work with glibc. 
and Muscle really isn't a drop-in replacement for glibc. It's built with much more minimalism and security in mind. It's also stricter about the C implementations, whereas glibc offers a little bit more wiggle room. I'll probably link some stuff down below if you're interested in reading up on the differences between Muscle and glibc. Or you can just wait for more videos on my channel comparing the two. I plan to do some videos about Muscle on Gen 2 because obviously I've got a few other Gen 2 machines that are built on a glibc and I think you can build BusyBox in Gen 2 as well so that way I can do a bit more of an apples to apples comparison on Muscle versus glibc because obviously Alpine is a binary distro and that gives it a significant disadvantage to a distro where we compile everything uh, like Gen 2. So let's get back to getting a GUI going. So we're going to set up xorg base. And let's get a terminal going. So apk add st. I'm gonna use the suckless terminal apk add alpine desktop and let's apk add xfce4 and apk add thunar volman and since we're in VirtualBox, we also have to add some extra packages so that we can get a full resolution working. So we're gonna apk add xf86 video vbox video xf86 video intel xf86 video vesa and apk add xf86 input synaptics and apk add virtualbox guest additions ah, i cannot spell right a d d i t i o n s um what is this oh yep still didn't spell it right guest additions. All right, there we go. And uh, what else do we have to do? Oh yeah, so we have to add things to RC. So RC service dbus start, RC update add dbus, RC update add udev, and RC update add virtual box guest additions default. All right, so now we're going to reboot again, but this time we should have a working GUI available to us. All right, so we'll log in as root, and startx should give me a GUI. And let's see if I can also go to full screen mode. Um, all right, where is my option to move the screen? Um. Ah, okay, it's over here on my right monitor. All right, so for some reason, this uh, version of VirtualBox that I have, it's version, I think, 6.1. It, it does this weird thing where normally there's a menu down at the bottom, like the bottom part here, where I would be able to change um, 
where I'd be able to change what output it goes to because I've got three screens and right now it's not on the right one. Now it's on the right one. Okay, so we got our GUI up. Um, it is not the right resolution though. Um, and what's this? No. Oh, okay. So I just need to find ST, which should be in here somewhere. Um, okay, now for some reason it's not taking keyboard input. This is a little bit interesting. Okay, so I do have higher resolutions available, that's good. But I need to get, okay, there we go. That was just some weird thing that, uh. Okay, there we go. So now we got ST selected as our terminal. And now I should be able to start a terminal without any problems. And I'm gonna set my resolution the cool kid way. X Randar 1920 by 1080. Um, X Randar not found. Oh, I gotta install X Randar, duh. APK add X Randar. There we go. And let's do full screen mode so it looks really cool. All right, so this is Alpine Linux, guys, with a XFCE uh, desktop. And let's go ahead and APK add HTOP, just so we can get a little bit of a footprint of our RAM in a, in a nicer looking way. So we're using just under 200 megs of RAM. Now granted, you know, we're using XFCE. It's not like I went full minimalist and did a, um, did a window manager, right? We're using XFCE, which is still pretty lightweight as far as desktop environments go, but this is pretty amazing how lightweight of a distribution this is. I don't think, I'm trying to think what, uh, XFCE, I think Mint XFCE uses about 250 megs of RAM, give or take, when it's just idling like this. So this is pretty impressive as far as the footprint that this leaves. And like I said, I'm gonna be doing more videos about um, Muscle and hopefully BusyBox in Gen 2, maybe in Alpine as well, because I wanna see if I can get some heavier packages working in here. Like when I was researching Muscle, apparently it can be a challenge to build Firefox on Muscle. So obviously if there's no way around building Firefox, then Muscle might not actually be a realistic option for me. Uh, but let me know what you guys think about Alpine. If you're gonna try it out on your own computers, of course, leave a like on the video if you enjoyed it and share it with someone who you think might find it useful. Peace out, guys.